when I actually did the ECG and someone did it on me and then we pulled it out and one of the students looked at it and then looked at me and then looked at it like that and then I looked at it and panicked a little bit and I think that that's something that I need to get better at. Oh, I can't really remember anything. Chanel, do they know that I'm in town? I don't think they do, baby, no. I'll let them know. Though. Yeah, let them know. I'll let them know. Let them know. Baby, what have you got planned for the day? I have work today. Being glamorous and excellent, is that? Yeah. Not on the agenda. Your words, not mine. I was given a script before. <laughs> You're so <laughs> cheeky. I have done something unforgivable this morning, unfortunately. What happened, sweetheart? What did you do? Yeah. Well, oh, what did I do? In. Slept in. Good afternoon and welcome to another week in my life at medical school. Really, really excited about this week because I have just started on my new rotation on the respiratory ward. There's a lot of people with chest problems on every acute medical unit that I've been on so far in the um, endocrinology placement that I've just been on. So I do feel like I've had a good amount of exposure to respiratory, but I'm really, really excited to deep dive into the clinics, the outpatients, and also the wards, seeing how people are treated with respiratory conditions. Now, this is a five week placement as all placements are at Manchester when you're doing your clinical years in year three. So for the next five weeks, I will be doing respiratory and only respiratory on the wards. So that's really, really exciting. In our track, there's six students, six or seven students, and we're actually grouped up in pairs for this rotation. So each of the pairs will all be doing different things each day throughout this rotation. So I found it really useful this morning because it's Monday, it's the start of the week, start of the new rotation to just copy in my custom timetable into my actual uh, Google calendars that I use to organize my life. Just because I find it a lot easier when I need to know where I need to be, just clicking on my day and just checking where I actually need to be each day. In half an hour, I've got my induction for my respiratory block. So this is gonna be a three hour period where we meet the consultant, we learn about what we're gonna be doing over the block, and we basically get oriented with the site and the wards and the areas of the hospital that we're gonna be spending the next five weeks. Not the busiest of days, but a nice way to just ease me into the week because I had a really long sleep in, which was necessary. So time for this induction lecture from it's a two, three hour induction. Beautiful day today. Sun's shining. Typical Manchester. Looking forward to it. And so, just had the tour of the wards where we're gonna be, the respiratory clinic, the lung function test clinic, the lung cancer multidisciplinary team meeting rooms also the acute medical unit for respiratory medicine which is where i'm going to be tomorrow morning at 9 a.m so yeah lots and lots to do lots of good stuff to learn I'm really really excited about this block all right so just to update you on how the intro went with the consultant it was really great. He's a really, really cool guy that's our consultant for this block. Seems really informal. He was very frank about, you know, what, what sessions are the most important, the clinics, the lung functions, and also the cancer multidisciplinary team meetings. They are really important things to be there for. And also the ward round with the consultant because we'll get a lot of bedside teaching with that. So that was really, really helpful to be there this morning. He did say things like the patient assessments and the history taking and then obviously the presentations. He says he doesn't really care if we're there. Just make sure you go to some of them and get your sign offs done. So that's great. I'll definitely be making the most and taking advantage of this block because honestly, it sounds amazing. I've done a lot of breathlessness stuff because that was the four, first four weeks of TCD cases. So I feel like I know quite a bit on that. So yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, now I'm just gonna cook a stir fry with YouTube on my iPad because I've got swimming in about an hour and a half and Jenny's gonna be home and she's gonna want feeding um, this week. I'm gonna help out a little bit and do some cooking. So stir fry it is.
And guess what time it is? It is 7.30 and guess who's shown up? Jenny's shown up and your duty is gonna have to be to take over cooking dinner because yeah. unfortunately I've got to set off in 10 minutes to go swimming for two hours until 10 and because the dinner's not ready yet I'm not even gonna be able to eat it so I'm gonna have to have a protein shake a yogurt and eat at 10 when I get back so you're eating on your own that was your new job good what do you do tell the people what you do I'm in personal shopping You're now. Personal isn't it? shopping. Yeah. So you're doing all the VIP clients. Yep. Okay. So when do you want to get me booked in then? <laughs> You'll have to wait till after Chanel has left. Chanel, do they know that I'm in town? <laughs> I don't think they do, baby. No. I'll let them know. Though. Yeah, let them know. I'll let them know. Let them know. Time for swimming. This rain, disgusting. But I hate this country. Just got home from swimming with dinner. I'm gonna do some past med questions. This tends to be my evening routine whenever I'm on the toilet, I'm eating, I'm commuting. Yep. That's too much I'm a guy. <laughs> Guys talk like this, Jennifer. You know this. So There's no filter. Just trying to get as many past med questions done as possible every so often whenever I'm really doing nothing, which to be honest is never because I'm always doing something. So yeah. I don't really do. <laughs> I've got ad-libs in the background for some reason. <laughs> I feel like I'm doing a rap verse. Oh yeah! <laughs> God's sake. Food's delicious, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, they yeah, do. I wonder why. Really well that mm. Happens when I go to the kitchen. Maybe you should cook all the time now. Oh yeah, I should just do everything, shouldn't I? Maybe I should... Yeah. Oh. Good morning. I'm super excited for today because in about 25 minutes, I've got Pat teaching at MRI hospital, which is actually an amazing hospital. I'm so happy to be waking up today and to start this placement at MRI. It is 10 minute cycle from where I'm living and it just feels good to not have to do that 25 minute uphill cycle over to North Manchester General Hospital, which is where my last placement was. So that's a massive bonus. And today, yeah, I've got Pat teaching to start with, whatever that is. Uh, I think it's with the consultant at bedside. So that should be interesting. And then this afternoon, I have uh, patient assessments and presentations. So just practicing talking to patients and examining them and presenting it. So a lot of good stuff planned for the day. Baby, what have you got planned for the day? I have work today. Being glamorous and excellent. Is that, yeah. is that what's on the agenda? Your words, not mine. Oh, okay. Thank you. I was given a script before. <laughs> 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 wow, what a long day in the respiratory unit today. What an amazing day as well. Some amazing bedside teaching uh, with the consultant at the start of the day for an hour and a half, seeing a pneumothorax, seeing pleural effusions, uh, examining patients with those um, presentations. So, so interesting. What a day I have had. Let me just put you on the tripod. So much fun today. I kid you guys not. Like, respiratory is so, so good. It's well organized and yeah, just amazing. So, I started at 10 30 till 12 with bedside teaching with the consultant. This was actually with my full track. So, there's six of us at the bedside with different patients that the consultant felt like they were good people to teach. And yeah, it was amazing because one person had a massive pleural effusion of the lung. And the reason why this was good is because often when you learn in preclinical years, you hear about all these things like dullness to percussion or like reduced air entry. And sometimes you don't actually know what you what that actually is. And that's the beauty of clinical years because we were actually able to tell what it, it meant by you know reduced air entry and also doing um, the vocal fremitus, asking them to say 99. That was another technique that we'd learned today that isn't actually in our normal OSCE revision things. And then we went on to see a lad, a young lad with a pneumothorax, which was so cool because you always hear about pneumothorax in med school. And we finally saw one, a young, tall gentleman, and he was a smoker very high risk and uh, he had a chest drain in. So that was super cool to see that. Then after that uh, teaching session, which was really, really good. Oh, take you over here. 
I've actually got food in the microwave because I'm starving and I've not eaten anything all day because I just wanted to bang out today's patient assessments. And that's essentially what I did. So after the teaching session, everyone else went on the lunch and I was like, actually, no, I just want to bang out as many patient assessments as I possibly can right now, a presentation and also my physical exam. So I did that. I've done two patient assessments, one patient presentation and one physical examination. So I basically only need to do one more uh, patient assessment this week and then I've done this week's tasks. One thing that I have noticed that I find a little bit difficult is if I don't get the opportunity to present a patient assessment that I've just done with a patient to a doctor on the ward there and then, if I then go and speak to another patient, I find it really, really difficult to remember what the first patient presented with. And I think that that's something that I need to get better at because obviously when you're a doctor on a ward and you're speaking to a consultant, sometimes the consultant might just ask you, what's happening with that bed? What's happening with that patient, that patient? And you just need to remember everything in. but I really struggled doing a patient presentation with a patient that I'd assessed a few hours earlier. I was like, oh, I can't really remember anything. That was a really good learning opportunity because it's highlighted to me that it is really, really important to try and remember the key themes, the key things, the main presenting complaint that that person came in with because often you can get really caught up with the little stuff. Oh, I've also got a little bit of back pain as well. Oh, my legs are a little bit tingling as well. I've reduced sensation there. And often you get overwhelmed with all these different things, but it's important to remember why did the patient come in and what are the main key themes that you need to present to the doctor or the consultant on the ward. So that was amazing. Time to get some food. And I've cooked a lovely dinner this Baby, evening. Baby, you've what? not cooked it. I've cooked what it. What do you mean? I you did didn't all the salmon. Lift a finger. No, you did well, nothing. Well, it does look lovely. So definitely improving in terms of the kitchen, aren't you? You're over there. I'm quite and impressed. I was fine to begin with. Thank you very much, mouthpiece. <laughs> this is so nice. Mm. And I cannot believe that I've finally got you eating fish. This is a mental sight to see. In terms of this evening's work though, I've done nothing in terms of medical school. I've done a lot in terms of everything else. Um, just basically been sat at the laptop organizing some uploads, scheduling some uh, videos, and also organizing some files for my editor, which has been really, really long. It takes a huge amount of my time. I spent four hours doing that this evening. Um, and I now need to do some stuff for my company registration on company's house with my accountant. So that's gonna be this evening's agenda. No work um, in terms of university related things, but tomorrow, big day ahead because I've got ECG teaching session in the morning. And then after that, I've got lung function tests, lung function, um, uh, something or other, I'm not actually sure. But um, yeah, open mind for tomorrow. Exciting stuff. Dr. I think, Matt I, I think I'm gonna, yeah, Dr. Matt is back two years time. Um, I think I'm going to sign out here for today. I've had a good day. See you guys tomorrow. Good morning. I have done something unforgivable this morning, unfortunately. What happened, sweetheart? Yeah, well, what did I do? In. Slept in. This morning I was supposed to have an ECG session from nine till 10, one of the skills training sessions, just learning about the things that we have to do for our upses this year. And I missed it because I stayed up last night doing lots of extra work, um, building question banks for about two hours and I didn't get to bed until late. So I just felt like death this morning and I ended up sleeping in, didn't set my alarm. Really, really annoying, but Yes, that will go down as an absence, which is fine because in clinical years, year three, you're basically allowed 16 absences across the course of the year. That's the maximum, I think, 14 or 16, and I've not had any absences so far this year. So that's only gonna count as one, but fortunately I have emailed the department and they have slotted me in later this afternoon for a session at 3.15 after my lung function uh, tests on the respiratory ward. So I'm not gonna be behind per se, um, and I've also done the ECG sign-offs for my upsers, so I'm more than happy to just go ahead and just do that. I'm literally just going for the sake of just attending and getting the sign-off that I was there in the session, just in case there's anything I missed. Because I am finding when you are on the ward and you are witnessing the nurses and staff do the procedures, they do actually do it a little bit differently to how you're actually taught. They do tend to cut corners, and that's just because in a busy hospital environment, that tends to be the case. But until then, 
I'm just going to do some more question banks because my lung function tests start at 1pm and it's now, you know, 11ish. So I'm just going to spend the next couple of hours doing some work on that and then crack on at hospital. So if you guys are wondering how I have been studying, it is basically by creating a question bank relevant to the condition on the case that I'm studying. So I'm actually looking at case five, week five TCD, which is all about central chest pain. So what I'm doing is I'm using the conditions list on the MLA content map. And the one that I'm looking at right now is acute coronary syndromes. And with that, I'll open up PassMed, a high yield textbook, I'll open up zero to finals, I'll open up pulse notes, and I'll use some of the BNF in order to basically write question banks on all the relevant knowledge that I need. And that is all the clinical stuff. So science symptoms, some background information, investigations, management and treatment. And I basically just extrapolate all the key information on that on each of my conditions. Once I've done that, I put it all into this nice big uh, table on my notion so that whenever I'm on clinics or I'm in hospital and I want to pull up more information on my condition that I'm looking at, I can just click on it, open it up and I have all of my question banks in there giving me the relevant information. I just find that that's a good way of doing things. It's helpful while I'm studying right now, building these question banks and I'm actually learning a little bit. I know it's quite passive and it's not really active, my goal is really to go through the question banks at some point, but I'm hoping just by doing this, it is just going to stick in my brain. You know, that's what medicine's all about. It's all about just figuring out what works for you. Hopefully it works for me, and at the end of it, I will retain all this information. But I know that the way to succeed is active recall and question banks. So, you know, hopefully I'll just find the time to do these question banks. Because right now I just feel like all I'm doing is building question banks, not actually doing them. All right, just had lunch and I'm about to go for these lung function tutorials at the hospital on the respiratory ward. I'm not sure what to expect, but I'm looking forward to that. See you after the session. So just finished with the ECGs after an afternoon of lung functions. Pretty good. It's going dark though. Definitely means it's time to get home. Where are we? Starbucks. We're at Starbucks. Why are we at Starbucks? Because today, um, today only, NHS workers, including medical students, I don't know if it's medical students as well, we get a free uh, cappuccino, so we've got that on the way. Catching up with uh, some red velvet. Good evening. Oh, what a day I have had, and it has been a good one. It's been productive. Uh, yeah, starting with the uh, lung function um, clinic, which was pretty cool because we had a COPD patient in, and also a young lad with Hockham, which is hypertrophic obstructive cardiac, cardiac myopathy, which I've come across quite a few times um, so far in this course and in, during some of my revision, doing some uh, work on murmurs. So it was interesting to have a brief chat with him as we were in the lung function clinic because he was taking some medications that could potentially uh, cause some respiratory problems as well. So the lung function clinic is essentially just basically um, pulmonary plethmosmography or whatever you want to call it, which is basically all of the lung function tests that you are familiar with in med school, which is, you know, spirometry and all of the components that come with that. So it was good to learn from the respiratory physiologists about, you know, the things that they do and learning about you know, the Z-score, which is often a more reliable tool that's used in diagnosing obstructive or restrictive disorders. So that was interesting. So I did actually learn something from that. And because this morning I missed out on my ECG session, I did attend an ECG with the other students from a different track. So yeah, pretty much everything that I've already done in A&E. So it was just a case of just getting signed off that my attendance, that I actually attended that session. Didn't really learn much from it. Other than the fact, that I apparently have sinus arrhythmia, as you can see. But 
you know. When I actually did the ECG and someone did it on me and then we pulled it out and one of the students looked at it and then looked at me and then looked at it like that. And then I looked at it and panicked a little bit. You know, I did a little bit of reading on sinus arrhythmias and that is pretty normal in very athletic people. And considering growing up, I was, well, an athlete. You know, I used to compete nationally in swimming, swimming six, seven times a week sometimes. It is pretty normal to see sinus arrhythmias, which is basically, can be very, very slow heart rate, very low heart rate. My heart rate is usually around 50 odd, uh, 50, 60 sometimes, and I never feel dizziness, never have any symptoms. So that's nothing to be concerned about. So yeah, pretty reassuring that I've got a normal, healthy heart. Now I'm feeling good, ready for an evening of productivity, getting some more work done throughout the uh, TCD case, case number five, even though this week we're meant to be on TCD case number 10. So that's how behind I am. I'm gonna have a shower and get into it. And that was the end of clinical debrief. Two hours of talking about a patient presentation, thinking like a doctor with our doctor who runs these sessions, which is really, really helpful. It's now 11 o'clock and I've got a session, skill session later this afternoon. Hey, so yeah, I, I mean, personally, clinical debrief is definitely one of the highlights of med school third year for me. I just think, you know, sitting down with a GP, and I just think it's really helpful in learning the foundations of what it means to think more like a doctor and think more clinically, because, you know, when we speak to patients and we do histories and we present it to the doctors on the wards, we don't really get a huge amount of time to really think about how and why we've asked those questions, because often the doctors on the wards are in a rush. So they just kind of want to get the main bits out of you and they want to sign you off and then job done. You just go off on your own and figure it all out. But clinical debrief is a two hour period to sit with your track of six people and just talk to a GP and just figure out why would I ask that? What are the best things about being a GP? What are the worst things? Like, what would you do in a safeguarding situation? Like if you feel like someone's being abused, like you really get the opportunity to pick the brains of a doctor. But also I really like the fact that we spend half of the session breaking down a case presentation whereby one of the students will present a case that they've experienced on the ward and we will act as if they're the patient and we'll ask all the relevant questions. And then the doctor, the GP will always ask, so why are you asking that question? And if we ever find ourselves stuck in a rut and we don't know where else to go with it, the doctor will say, have you really asked all the questions on breathlessness? Have you really asked all the systems review right now? Is there anything else you can really think about? Why would you ask that? Why did you ask that? What are the red flags of this? So it really helps you break down things and think about things more like a doctor, which is why it's so fun. So really enjoyed the clinical debrief and in about half an hour I need to set off because I have thyroid exam which we did do last semester in endocrinology but it was very brief because I just didn't enjoy endocrinology but hey ho thyroid exam this afternoon and that's it oh and so let me get another light put on just to make the uh, picture look a little bit more uh, cinematic okay that looks better yeah so got home from the thyroid exam which was pretty good because it was combined with a lymph node exam because you tend to do the two together now i was actually scheduled to be back on the wards this afternoon doing patient assessments and patient presentations but because this morning in our clinical debrief with our gp we actually did a case i wrote that up as one of my patient assessments and that basically covers me for all three patient assessments this week you know like obviously i am scheduled scheduled in to be on the ward this afternoon but like I am incredibly busy I've got so many other things to do especially outside of university you know I've got two videos that I need to review for my uploads I've also just basically bought a flat that I needed to complete on so I needed to do a bank transfer I need to sign some documents I need to get a legal charge put through with my solicitor so I've had loads of back-end admin stuff to do since getting home that needs doing by the end of this week and also I'm DJing tonight from 8 p.m so I've just got so many other things that I need to think about and get done in the short period of time that I have in a day and you know I've got all my sign-offs done for my med medical stuff this week so best use of my time is probably at home doing some of my back-end admin stuff then I want to do some work towards my case 5 TCD even though tomorrow it's case 10 TCD close and I've done no work towards it but you know this is basically a good example of what clinical years is about you're just going to get really behind but you just need to go out or there on the wards and practice speaking to patients and that's going to be the best thing that's going to benefit you the most I feel so confident and so comfortable speaking to patients getting histories doing examinations that you know I do feel like that is me in my natural element um, and that's where I'm best um, doing what I do so to be honest, the best way that I can practice is learning the bioscience and learning the clinical stuff and learning what investigations I need to know and the actual science and all the conditions. So that's best done while I'm at home on the computer. And that's what I'm gonna do for the rest of the afternoon. 
first start editing a video, um, doing some video reviews, and getting some playlists planned for this evening's set at uh, my residency at Phoenix Restaurants, where I play Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So if you guys ever wanna come down, get yourself booked in, you can come see me there. And yeah, get some work done, hopefully in preparation for tomorrow's TCD. Good morning, you guys. It is just about 10 o'clock. Jenny's fast asleep right now, so I'm in the kitchen and I've got a really busy day. Like for the next hour, I'm basically just scheduled in reviewing one of my videos for my main channel, which is my travel channel. So if you wanna watch that video, make sure you click on that card up there. But after that, I'm going to do a little bit of work towards this week's TCD case. Um, I've not even looked at it. I don't even know what it's on because at 1.30 I've got TCD from 1.30 until 3 and then from 3 till 4.45 I've got my secondary component teaching which is on consent, capacity and confidentiality um, and yeah then I'm back at work from 7 till 1am so really really busy day there's not enough hours in the day honestly I've not done any work this week, any studying Mad. anyway, time to get on with something So this week's TCD is on epigastric pain and on the TCD case on one med, I find it really helpful before the TCD case close, which is today in an hour, um, to just go through the case and work through it as it's presented because these cases are actually really, really good on one med in clinical years. So as you can see at the start, it gives us a presentation, what the person came in with, some epigastric pain. And then the first question that's interactive on here, it will ask you, what systems do you think could be involved? And then from that, you might ask, you know, what kind of questions would you want to ask? Then it'll give you a bit more information, such as like the patient's a drinker. So now you start to think about what the differentials might be. And then it gives you an, an examination and then you actually see a positive Cullen sign, which is the periumbilical uh, bruising that you get in what well, most likely in acute pancreatitis and then from that obviously you can figure out what the most likely differential is and then from that the least likely differential that you originally thought so you know with that kind of pain in that region you can also sometimes think about ACS acute coronary syndromes but that'll be least likely considering the kind of signs that we've got so from that you work your way through it and it gives you some nice pathophysiology of pancreatitis it tells you you know how you diagnose it in terms of like elevated lipase or amylase over three times the normal amount or some radiography findings or even just the abdominal um, symptoms that someone might find and then it just really really helps you work your way through it um, and I really find this a really effective way of just you know giving yourself the fundamental knowledge that you need to be able to contribute enough and get enough from your TCD case close so to all you guys out there thinking what's the best way of going about it and pre preparing for your TCD case close on Friday, I'd honestly just say make sure you work through the case on one med and that is going to give you more than enough information that you need uh, to feel sufficiently um, geared up for the case close and to have that knowledge for that week's case. But yeah, I'm going to have my lunch and then head over to university. <laughs> Right, off we go. TCD case closed for an hour and a half and then secondary component teaching for another an hour, hour and a half on consent. Fun for all the family. Let's go. And that was SCT. Another week at med school complete. Good. And so, I've just got back from a really long day. Well, actually not a long day, it just feels like a long day, at university. Um, yes, we started with TCD, which honestly, guys, it is my favorite part of, one of my favorite parts of med school. One of the best things about this course, you basically go through the casework with a consultant and it's group work that you do. You're with your track and everyone's sat in the lecture theater, which is cool. And today it was on obviously acute epigastric pain and we get a presentation and essentially the consultant is quite literally just probing us. Okay, so based on this presentation, what are we all thinking? And she goes around the groups and obviously everyone's advised to just talk to their groups and come up with ideas. And that's fun because then you present it to the consultant at the front of the room and then they help you work through it. And then they go on to the next stage. Okay, so this is the X-ray, this is the CT scan, X, Y, and Z. So this is really cool. And I really enjoy TCD. And I always find that coming out of the TCD session, I've always learned a huge amount. And I always feel like the amount that I've learned 
is so high after a TCD session. It is really, really invaluable. And if there's one thing you cannot miss, cannot miss in third year at medical school, it's your TCDs. Make sure you are there to every single one. You'll learn so much. And then after TCD, we had a SCT session, which is secondary component teaching. Now, a lot of people will argue SCT is probably one of the most boring parts of the course. It's quite literally prescribing stuff, consent, capacity, conversations about ethics and law, and all of the things that you just kind of have to do as a doctor. And I get, obviously it's incredibly important, but just the sessions can be a little bit dull and not incredibly interactive. Now the SCT sessions and the way that they're run at MRI is essentially there are two tracks grouped together. So that's 16 people in one room with one facilitator basically organizing the session. Usually there's a case. There's one opportunity to for one person in that group to do a full consultation with a SP. And there's basically one simulated patient that comes in to that session and only one pupil will essentially, one student will get the opportunity to do a full consultation. So for that person, it is a really good opportunity to practice their consultation skills on an ethics station. And that's really, really important because this year in our CCAs, I think we have 16 stations and one of them or two of them will absolutely be ethics stations. And the thing is, examinations like chest, chest um, respiratory, you know, uh, thyroid exams, all these things, we can practice those. We can practice those with our colleagues. We can practice those on the wards, but often it's very, very difficult to emulate an ethics style station. So the only opportunity we get in year three to actually do any practice on ethics is those sessions that we have once a week. And because there's 16 people in a group and only one SP and one facilitator, once a week, only one person out of that 16 will get the opportunity. And today, I volunteered again. I've actually done it twice now out of the six sessions, and that's generally because people don't really want to volunteer. And I get it because there's a massive audience. There's like 16 people that you're doing it in front of, as opposed to years one and two, when you're doing your clinical skills sessions, you're doing it in front of maybe a group of four or five. So yeah, it's a bit daunting, and I don't necessarily love the way that that part of it's run. I think they could do a better job of making the group smaller and making it a bit more interactive. But you know, secondary component teaching is an essential part of the course because these are things that you have to know as a doctor, things about ethics. And today it was on the basis of basically a lady came to the GP and I was essentially the, the, the GP and she was concerned that her husband had had unprotected sex with someone else and she's concerned about whether or not he has HIV. So she came to me knowing that I'm the doctor for him as well and was asking me to access his patient records and unfortunately I was not able to give them to her so that's what the consultation was it was basically about how I should address that what the laws are and the legalities around disclosing medical conditions such as HIV which you do not have to disclose to another patient unless uh, on the basis that you are U equals U which is undetectable and untransmissible so yeah that was a really really good task a really good bit of practice for me so I found the session incredibly useful because I managed to get a practice session in with a simulated patient on an ethics station but now it is nearly 6 p.m. and at 7 p.m. I'm going to work DJing tonight at Phoenix until 1 a.m. so big night ahead I'm gonna do a little bit of studying just before I head out And there you guys have it. That has been another week at med school here on my respiratory block. Really, really excited for the next four weeks on this block. I've only got one more week until we break up for Christmas. So that's exciting because we get two, two weeks only in uh, clinical years, I think, for Christmas break. And that's just basically gonna be a hell of a lot of catch up on all the work that I'm behind on. But last night at work was amazing. Same again today with it being Saturday, seven till one, I'm back at work and I'm just gonna catch up with loads of studying now. So if you guys have enjoyed this one, hit the like button, hit the subscribe, you know what to do. Check out these other videos on my playlist right here. But as always, I'll see you in the next one.